she's going to talk to us about addressing irregular stigmatism at the time of cataract surgery. Thanks, Sude. So irregular cell, my disclosure is not really relevant, as you'll see. You know, even a diopter of cell is going to degrade vision. I just got a lens from my trial lens set and held it in front of my little Sony digital camera from Costco and took a picture out my window. And obviously the camera can't autofocus through cell, so you can see what the effect of one diopter cell is. So can you fix the irregular cell during surgery? So there's times where you want to fix it before. Let's look at the before examples. This patient, I'm thinking, wow, what a dense rock of a cataract. I should fix that first, right? How much astigmatism is that trigium causing? Answer, nine diopters. Holy moly, exactly. EBMD, which we talked about this morning. Here, epithelial ingrowth. This patient said, just fix my cataract. I don't want my ingrowth fixed. Well, I can't help you. Dry eye syndrome can cause irregulars on our measurements, as we said this morning. Sometimes you'll fix the astigmatism after the cataract surgery. Don't worry about it. If the eye looks like this, listen, you're, you're not going to be able to address this at the time of your surgery. Or this. Or this existing scar the patient had. You know, the cataract surgery alone may be good enough. The patient may be happy enough. I have no idea what to even do with this. Huh. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like part of a football field. Um, 32 cut RK, you're not going to be able to figure this still out. Don't worry about it. Or this, that's a decentered LASIK ablation. You can see on the, on the, the pachymetry measurements how decentered that is. There's no way to fix that. Or this, bottom line is don't attempt to fix astigmatism if it's very irregular, if it's centrally asymmetric, or it's unstable. Sometimes, in those cases, best surgery may be no surgery. Well, when can you fix it at the time of cataract surgery? So remember, we want, easiest is, the easiest is to fix a regular symmetric astigmatism. That's easily treated. LRIs we talked about, torque lenses work great for regular symmetric cell. The key, though, in these is looking at that central cornea. Look at that zone. If that's relatively symmetric, then a torque lens can be reasonable. Look at central can topography. It's pretty regular in that zone. Here's another example, centrally regular, peripherally irregular. Look, look at two quick examples, FFKC. This is a patient referred to me, and when you look at the pictures here, yeah, cataracts in both eyes, but important things. Here's the old refraction, and 10 years ago, with glasses, the patient could see 20-20 in this eye, 20-25 minus in that eye. That's good, because 10 years ago, probably no cataracts, and glasses don't fix any irregular cell. So when I look at the topography here, I can see there's some inferior steepening, especially in this left eye. The right eye looks pretty good. Okay, that's easy enough to use a torque lens. Left eye's got that inferior steepening, but it's pretty regular within the center. So we end up doing the torque lens. I keep her in the monovision range that she likes, and she has a darn good result. And you can see here still, there's a little corneal effect because the BCVA in the left eye is still only 2025, but the patient's very happy. So looking at that central zone can tell me is the patient going to tolerate a toric lens and be happy with it? Second example, prior RK. And you can see there's the RK cuts. Look at the central can, the topography, and the patient does have this little bit of a bow tie, pretty regular in that pupillary zone. So I do my ASRS website, I do the toric calcs, plug it all in. There's the phaco incision snuck in between the RK cuts. Post-op day one looks pretty good. There's the toric lens that went in the eye, very high power because of the uh, prior RK. And after a week, it looks pretty darn good. After a month, a little bit myopic shift, but a patient's happy. So in the take-home message is, look at the topography in the pupil zone. If it's treatable pre-op, fix that first. If it's highly irregular, unstable, don't touch it, because the last person to touch it, it's always their fault. And if the central zone looks pretty reasonable, then the torque guy well should be fine. And then the two ways that I like to remember that is look at the central can topography, but also in history, if they've tolerated glasses and saw pretty well with sill in their glasses, they'll probably tolerate a torque lens. If, however, they required an RGP contact in order to fix their astigmatism in the past, I'm not putting a torque lens in. And that's it. Easy breezy. Any questions uh, from the panel? So um, if you're going to use a toric lens in somebody who does have irregular astigmatism, though you feel the central zone is you know, fairly good, do you d tell them that it's an off-label use or do you just uh, go with it? You know, that's a good question. I think I tell them it's in my actual consent for surgery that much of what I do is off-label, so I don't say specifically. Uh -huh. okay. I'll, say, I'll, I'll say that, yes, you know, 
it'd be much better if you had nice, normal corneas, but you were born with ugly corneas. What can I tell you? This toric lens is certainly going to help, I think. But you're right, it doesn't, it's, not a perfect, it's not a perfect fit. It's an almost fit. The question I have for you today is uh, sometimes these patients have trouble fixating. Depending on where they fixate, when the topography is gotten, you can get a very different reading, you know? Very true point, Terry. Absolutely. So, yeah, if they're looking around and they're yeah. fixating a different point, you may get different readings. So I like to confirm, if you have any doubt, repeat the topography at another visit, especially if on that first visit the patient's already had the IOP check, lots of drops in the eyes. Come back for a fresh visit and then try to correlate your other machines. Try to correlate your, your, you know, your Ks from your biometry, your LensStar IO Master, to your topography, to your tomography. Try to see what the consensus is. Actually, another question. Which K readings or which astigmatism readings do you use um, to determine your IOL uh, selection? You use uh, Auto Ks, uh, IOL Master, topography, Pentacam? So, you know, all, all the above are good questions. These days, okay. what I've been relying most I on is actually... come up with the hard ones. Yeah. Well, these days, what I rely most... I, I actually like the Galilee to look at the total refractive power so I can look at the posterior cornea in addition. If you're not doing that, I think using your case from, I think, the lens star especially, which has those 32 zones, those two 16-dot rings, can give you great case for the anterior surface and then maybe incorporating something like Doug Koch's Baylor nogram from this morning session. But no, there are no right, no, no right or perfect answers. They're pretty close answers. And I still tell patients, you know, I will power calculations as a misnomer. It's I will power estimation. And that goes for spherical as well as the torque part of the I will. Cool. Well, thanks, Sude. Thank you, guys.